Hi everyone! Welcome back to another one of my videos. Today I'm actually making a perfumer guide. Perfumer is probably my favorite character to play. She's been one of my mains since season 9. I really love playing perfumer. I think she's a lot of fun and there's so many cool things you can do with her. She's a great character. I, I really love her. <laughs> Um, I was a little nervous about making a guide because, I mean, I'm surrounded by, like, excellent players who are really good at who they play, and I was like, am I really qualified to, like, make a guide about a character I'm not a complete god with? But the thing is, like, I don't think I need to be a complete god at Perfumer to teach other people some stuff about her. So, welcome to my Perfumer guide, and hopefully this will help some people out. So starting off is her external traits. Euphoria is her perfume. If you get hit after you click the perfume button, you click again to reverse any damage that was done after the perfume was initially pressed. Blackout, when she misses a calibration, the cipher is set back three times as much as it is for other survivors. Basically, you don't want to miss calibrations. And finally, special physique. She has a 30% increased healing time. Just something that's important to keep in mind when you're playing games. So next is Persona Webs. I have two main builds that I run with Perfumer. I have my basic kiting build, which is Broken Windows and Borrowed Time, with two in sticker because of the slow healing time, so that if I go down, I can pick myself up faster. Exit path, of course, and I run max struggle speed whenever I get a forward on the team that can help a lot or any other harasser or just if the hunter is trying to take me really far away so that they can pressure ciphers more so that I can struggle out by more time. It's just the build I personally prefer. Other people may prefer great power, the palette stun, some people might even prefer self-deception because of her blackout trait, so that if they do miss calibrations, they aren't detected by the hunter and maybe doesn't even reset the cipher progress. Personally, I don't recommend this trait. I think it's a waste of persona web. You should learn how to hit calibrations relatively consistently and the benefit that that trait gives if you miss one or two calibrations isn't as great as the benefit that any of the other traits that you could get will give you. Other options are snooze so that you have increased chair time and if you go down the rescuer has more time to get over to your chair and rescue, and everyone else has a few extra seconds to decode. You might want to run healing speed so that teammates heal you faster, but personally, I prefer the struggle speed because I think that's the most useful in my experience out of everything. And my other build is my Tide Turner build which is Borrowed Time, Tide Turner, Exit Path, and three points in Knee Jerk Reflex. This is a build that I typically only run on small maps if there is only one rescuer on the team. Because sometimes even if you have someone else like a mechanic or a priestess running Tide on the team, they're still they still might be very likely to get chased especially a mechanic so i prefer having that additional tide turner on the team just in case and because on small maps usually i can kite pretty decently even without broken windows and so as long as i have that palette boost i should be able to last with my three perfumes as much as i would last otherwise and i can rescue as well so next I'll be talking about insta-perfuming. And when I say that, I mean the perfumes that you basically time by watching the hunter. So one of the first things is really just 
you can't insta perfume if your ping isn't green. I know it's tragic. If your ping isn't green, it's, it's just very unlikely that you're gonna get that perfume off. Unless it's like white guard Wu Chang or a charged attack. Also, some hunters are just hard to insta perfume. You know, black guard Wu Chang, his swing is very fast. Personally, I also have trouble against Soul Weaver and Violinist sometimes. Some of them just have really fast attacks, but it's it's okay. Like you don't need to always perfume every single hit as perfumer. Your perfume is there to help you kite. It's not there for you to get three lives achievement. So <laughs> it's okay if you don't always get insta perfumes. Another thing to help with perfuming is just to run back into the hit when you perfume. Sometimes hunters are gonna try to bait you, especially with a charged attack or something, or they're gonna swing when they're just a tiny bit out of range. And if you run back into the hit, you might end up forcing them to hit you. For that, it's really good to know the hunter's hitboxes. If they swing way out of their range, they're usually either gonna blink, they're trying to bait you with the blink, or just trying to bait you to perfume. But if you're not sure if it's gonna hit you or not, you're not completely sure about the range, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better to try that perfume and then try to last long enough till you get it back instead of just getting hit. So for actually getting the insta perfume off, usually you kind of have to be expecting that the hunter has a chance to hit you. So your finger should be above, right above the perfume button so that you can tap it really quickly. You watch for the hunter and when you see them raise their arm or pull it back whatever that specific hunter does right before they swing, you really quickly tap the perfume button and tap it again so that you can perfume back instantly. When I was first learning how to time perfumes off of the swing, because for a while I thought I couldn't even do that, but what I used to do is kind of wait and make sure I actually got hit because I was scared that if I just, you know, double tap the perfume, I'll go back instantly, even if I didn't get hit, and then it would be a waste. But that's not how it works. If you double tap the perfume, you're not going to go back instantly if you're not hit. So if you just tap it really quickly, like two times or even three when you haven't been hit, you're not going to go back and waste your perfume. Unless it's, there's like some really weird thing with Blackguard Wu Chang. Sometimes if you do that when he bells you, then you might go back. It's weird, I'm not 100% sure on that, but just be wary with that. But otherwise, you can just double tap and then you'll perfume back instantly and you can get more distance and make more of that attack recovery animation and more use of the speed boost. If you don't get hit, then you just run away from your perfume and keep kiting. You will definitely get baited at some point or another. It happens. Sometimes you're gonna think that the hunter's gonna blink, or sometimes you're so sure that was gonna hit, and then they turned away right at the last second and somehow avoided hitting you. Or they were just out of range when you thought it was actually gonna hit. It happens. It's okay. Just keep going, move on, and you can still kite. Even if you can't pull off an insta perfume, you can still do a prediction perfume. You can base your perfumes off of patterns, like a violinist using his second skill where he just continues swinging uninterrupted, a hunter that always swings as they turn a corner so that you can't see them, maybe a hunter that keeps on swinging in some pattern at a chair. You just look at their pattern, try to get used to it, and perfume when you get up close within their hitbox at the right time. And now some general things about kiting. First, you don't need an insta perfume all the time. If you're not sure about pulling off the insta perfume, just perfume somewhere that you know will buy you time. Kiting isn't getting the three lives achievement. It's just buying time. If it buys you time, 
it's good enough. If you don't land the perfume, get away from it. Make distance. You're trying to buy time and you can still stall out until you get your next perfume. If you don't get away, the hunter can just stand there, wait for your perfume to run out, and then hit you when it's gone. But if you run away, there's always the chance of you going back and getting more distance between you and the hunter. If your perfume is up, you can go ahead and drop pallets. You can perfume back if the hunter hits you while you're dropping it. The only exception is when it's just about to run out, since you can't perfume back during the animation of you dropping the pallet. But otherwise, don't be afraid to drop pallets if it'll get you distance. You should only really use perfume when you're definitely at risk of getting hit. Try to kite as if you don't have perfume. You don't want to get hit at all. It's just, you made a mistake, the hunter is about to get a free hit, then you use perfume. Especially against hunters like Wu Chang, you don't really want to give them presents if possible, so you shouldn't rely on your perfume too much to kite, and just try to avoid any hits, and only use the perfume when necessary. Now, unless there's a seer on the team, usually you want to insta-perfume any kind of secondary attacks, Anything that's not a basic attack, so whether it's a foggy blade, or an axe blade fireball, or anything like that. Ideally, you don't take those attacks so that you don't have to perfume them, but if you do, you might be able to buy yourself enough time to get to a pallet and kite out the rest of the cooldown if you insta-perfume it rather than waiting it out. On the other hand, if there's a seer, then you should ask for Owl and give him as much time as you possibly can to spectate before you go back. If you're injured and you still have perfume at a pallet or a window and you think you're about to get blinked, you can perfume, run, and then if you do get blinked and not instantly downed, you can either keep going or you can perfume and vault back. It's a great way to dodge blinks and keep up the pressure and keep up a good kite. And finally, another old trick that most people know about, perfuming and dropping down a hole or off of a second floor to drop to buy distance. If the hunter drops down right after you, you can perfume back and they can't get back up as easily as you did. Otherwise, you just buy distance as they wait for your perfume to disappear. If you're at full health, you can do this even when the hunter is really close to you, because even if they get a drop down hit on you, you can perfume back. If you're at half health, don't do it unless you know they're not going to be able to get that drop down hit before you've dropped down already and have time to perfume back. Rescuing with perfumer is pretty similar to kiting. You want to dodge secondary abilities. If you can't, you perfume them. If you perfume early on a rescue, the hunter won't hit you most of the time unless they know that they can get a terror shocked or it'll waste enough of your time as you wait so that you save after half or if it'll help them double hit. So try to keep that in mind when you go for a rescue. Sometimes the best time to actually rescue is right after you perfumed because the hunter doesn't want to risk hitting you and letting you get away full health. And now for some hunter specific things. If you're rescuing against the gamekeeper and they're going for a hook terror shock, you can just perfume and rescue. If they terror shock you with the hook, you can perfume back. If not, you have the save. They're not going to be able to get rid of the hook fast enough to terror shock you. If you're hooked by a gamekeeper early game and you know that you can insta perfume, Watch out for the difference between him swinging and putting down a peeper. A lot of them try to put down a peeper to bait you instead of immediately swinging. I haven't gone against a gamekeeper in a pretty long time, so I'm not sure if all of them still run peepers, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, you can also body block a gamekeeper's hook for your teammates at a gate. If you perfume, take the hook, and then go back, your teammates are going to be safe that way because you can go back, whereas even a Merc, if it's a full presence gamekeeper with detention, would go down after a hook and hit. Another trick that most people know against Photo, if you're injured in the mirror world, as long as you're not chaired in mirror world, 
You can perfume the damage just as the camera world is about to end. Most people use it to stay full health, but if you're half health and your photo was downed, you can perfume that to make sure you remain half health so that someone can heal you to full. Against Bonbon, a lot of Bonbons put bombs down at pallets and walk through them since if you drop the pallet, you'll get chip damage. So if you go past the pallet, perfume, drop the pallet, and hopefully get a stun, you can perfume back the bomb damage and keep kiting. If you're perfuming against the bomb on and they drop a bomb at your perfume and then try to hit you, you should wait a second before you perfume back so that the bomb explodes before you do and doesn't give you the damage. Sculptor, if she's trying to statue you instead of hit, she struggles a lot more with getting chip damage on you than Bonbon bon does when you're close to her, and her swing is really slow. So if she's trying to statue you, you can get really close to the Sculptor and just watch carefully for her swing so that you can perfume that, transition, keep kiting. Bloody Queen is pretty similar. When she uses her mirror, you can run back towards the main body, watch out for that swing, insta perfume, and then run away to make that mirror useless. Mad Eyes, I know a lot of people already know about the trick where you can perfume vault a wall, perfume back, and then the wall goes down and you can get through. Something to be wary of when you do that is when the Mad Eyes is actively looking at you and you already have one chip damage. Since the vault is so slow, if you vault when you're already injured, he can put up another wall to get that last chip damage on you before you even have a chance to perfume back and then you will go down. So that's just something you need to be wary of and be careful with when you're trying to pull that trick off. And finally, against Spider Gamekeeper, when they just reached full presence by getting a one-fourth damage attack on you, you can perfume the second spit or the hook to make sure that they don't insta-down you. It's better to take almost full damage but still be able to move on and kite and still be alive than take the full damage for an insta-down. And that basically concludes my perfumer guide. I really love perfumer and I hope more people enjoy playing her, find the fun in her. She's a great character to play. I really hope my guide helped you learn at least something about her. If you have any questions about anything I talked about or anything else, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. I'm always looking forward to finding out new things about Perfumer and teaching other people what I know. I know a lot of the stuff seems really basic, but if you're just starting out and especially if you don't really have anyone to teach you, there's a lot of things that you don't quite understand exactly how to do or how it works. So. Hopefully my guide explained some of those things. So thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And that'll be all for today. Bye bye!